How on earth can anyone justify this cost? The question is, what, what, what is the alternative? What do we do? We, there are 11 million of us at the moment who are struggling to pay our bills, right? And, and that is something we should have a razor sharp focus on. And we don't, because we get distracted by culture wars, we get distracted by hate, we dis get distracted by all sorts of things, because it's easier to talk about. Hey, we can better, think about more than better, one thing at a time, thank yeah, you very sure, much. Yeah, you know, sure, funny enough, they're all joined. A lot, a, yeah. a lot of media coverage. <laughs> does focus on those things. If you look at tabloids, if you look sometimes at the Telegraph and so forth, because it's clickbait. We have to have serious, responsible conversations about how we drive inflation down. Is the, is, is the government, is the Bank of England doing well enough? When mortgage rates go up to try to bring inflation down... Oh, hang on, what about the migrant hotels? ...are coming, but inflation stays high, then people are getting hit doubly. As far as the migrant hotels, because people are constantly being rammed full of anti-migrant, anti-asylum seeker rhetoric, a lot of it which is hate, hate, hateful, and some of it which is underpinned, in my view, by tacit racism, the result is that people feel very, very angry about this. And I get some of it, because people are really struggling. So to see people coming in from overseas and getting some sort of help can be infuriating. But just remember this. First of all, it's not much of a life to be s stuck in a hotel room, unable to work. It's not much of a life being on seven quid a week or whatever. And we do, like it or not, just as we have responsibilities to the climate crisis, though it can be painful, we have responsibilities yeah. to other human beings who are in desperate positions. Do I think we should have open borders? No. Do you th I think that we should get a control of what's going on in the Channel? Yes. But once people get here, we have to treat them humanely. Mm. Ben, you know, it winds me up when people say... I think it's a bit lazy, to be honest, Matthew. But, Ben, when people say, oh, it's just the tabloids whipping up hate, um, you know, people wouldn't care so much about the levels of immigration or the, the well, our poorest borders, essentially, or the money we're spending on these hotels if it wasn't whipped up so much by media who are hostile. I actually think that British people know when something doesn't look right well, and I mean... when it is not fair. And they do see that our, well, you could say our tolerance, our system, whatever, is being taken advantage of. I mean, this is not just optics. This is serious cost to the Exchequer. You know, we're talking about, at the moment, government figures suggest that it's costing us two and a half billion a year. I bet it's a lot more than that when we mm. take it all into account. But let's just take the two and a half billion a year. That's half a percent off the basic rate of tax for the working for the working classes and middle classes, well, for all of us, frankly. Um, but it's a really interesting point you made, Matthew, towards the end. You said, we've got to get a control of what's going on in the channel, but once people are here, we've got to look after them. What did you mean about getting control of what, what I would in do, the and channel? I think, and I'm not a fan of this government, as you presumably know. Yeah, nor am I. <laughs> Although you don't follow me on Twitter <laughs> yet, Ben. But, no, I'm not a fan of this government. What I think Rishi Sunak did something of was start a proper dialogue with the French. Now, the EU countries are not very well disposed towards us at the moment. You say everything's connected. Part of that is because people like you champion Brexit, and so they're not very happy with us. I don't think... I think that's small-minded of them, but I think it's a reality. Nonetheless, what we, our leaders should be doing is having responsible, high-level conversations with our partners in Europe and trying to find a way to make sure that people do not get on these boats in the first place. Because once they are on the boats, you have to save them. Look at what happened just off the coast. Let not, me finish yeah, the point, because... Yeah. Look at what happened off the coast of Italy and Greece the other day. We've been obsessed by this at the submersible, where tragically five people died. And I think a billionaire's life is worth every bit as much as everyone else's life. The problem is we didn't focus on 750 people on a boat that capsized, 100 children, they had no choice, 100 children below deck, 500 people presumed dead, or, or, or it's concerned, people are worried that they have died. That is a scale unimaginable. So once they're on the sea, we have to treat them as we would treat your family or my family or Emily's family and save them. Once they're in our country, we also have to treat them humanely. And believe me, none of these people, if you are Hang right... Hang on, do you not think that we should be deporting people who... Who, uh, who come here illegally. Come here illegally. Uh, of course we should, if they don't have a claim. The problem is, there is such a backlog, and while they're on the backlog, these people, far from living it up in hotels, are rotting away in hotels. If your narrative is right, that these people are no, actually no, no, economic they're not rotting, rotting, they're not rotting away in hotels. If these people are economic migrants, if, this is, if they want to come to this country for a better life, I can assure you, the one thing that they want to be doing is setting up a life here, getting a job, oh, going to work well, and contributing well, hang on, to the hang economy. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I think it's, it's difficult to talk, cos it's so difficult 
difficult to talk about this because some people make the assumption that everyone crossing the channel is an asylum seeker in fear for their lives persecuted. Then on the other hand, well, we have news well, Emily, that thousands of, of Albanian men are absconding yeah. from hotels, presumably to work in the black market. Are they coming for a lovely life in Britain? No, they're coming to make as much money as possible and then to go home, but maybe, or to just be in the criminal world, or Hang to on, just... how do you know? Why, why, because why, why I have spoken to border... with the idea of I have, because these that's, are the ones... That's what they, I mean by hate, I'm, I'm, That's but not hate. I am referring to a report that says thousands of Albanian yeah. men have absconded from hotel accommodation in this country. I have world. also spoken to former border uh, border staff, border control staff, who say that there are criminal elements coming from Albania. This is known. This is known. This isn't all... hate. Hang on, hang on. This first is known. Of, no, no, no. First of all, I am not suggesting that people who come from Albania should necessarily have a right to stay. What we need is an efficient system. That's why... That I, I agree about... with, hang on. definitely. That, hang on, that's why I'm... Don't tar all Albanians with the same brush. Don't tar all people on the left with the same brush. I have a sensible, I believe, rigorous approach to this. Once people are in danger, we have to save them. Once people are in this country, we have to treat them humanly. Mm. If they are here and they shouldn't be here, they should go back, whether it's Albania or anywhere else. But we have to develop better relations with our European partners in order to stop this in well, the first place. I mean, I think that is, if you don't mind, I, I was so very encouraged. Very quickly, Ben, yeah, got to move I haven't on. actually said anything. Yeah, very quickly, very quickly. <laughs> very but... quickly. Anyone crossing from France to the United Kingdom is an economic migrant because they are all, their safety is assured in France. They are not coming across here because they're worried about human rights abuses in France, unless France has deteriorated even beyond you know the worst imaginations of a Brexiteer. You know, you know, Ben, that that is a trite argument. You it's not a not, trite argument. You do not have to seek asylum in the first, first, first of all, country. And you second know of all, that. you no amount of money we spend on the French, and we've just given them half a billion, is ever going to make them right, stop. So what are you going to do? do? What do you do? I know exactly what I know. I would stop. I've got the article. We'll come back to it next hour.